In the previous video you could see us getting an old shipping container on our land. So we built a big roof on top to make it rainproof, added a storage system on the outside for our material bank and a waste system on the other side. Now we're going to finish it up in this last step to add storage inside and store our garden tools. Welcome to a new Project Camp update. So, container is here, works great and everything stays dry when it rains, the wood is stored properly, waste system functions. But one thing, uh, the most exciting part is actually the inside of the container, which we're going to do right now because it's currently messy. So yeah, here we store a bunch of things because it's our most dry storage place. But this also makes very diverse what we find in here. We have like saws, screws for the workspace, an old desk chair that someone gave and I actually don't know why it's not in the office. This used to be 20 kilogram of cacao powder, almost finished. It's been a few years that we've been working on that. Some tents, some racks from the refrigerator, water pump for the fires, linseed oil to coat our wood, chainsaw oil, incomplete precious plastic dome, and a happy birthday sign. So yeah, as you can see, a lot of random objects, all useful, most of them useful. Um, but we need to organize this so we can properly access them and store them. We're going to paint this side and build a wall in the middle. So this is going to be the clean area where we're going to store things like our food and long-term storage, so it's safe. And over here is going to be more the day-to-day -to -day tools and the garden uh, utilities we're all going to use so we can easily take them. So at the end, this should all be a super nice, well-equipped storage container. Just like the outside, the inside is pretty rough as well, like rusty areas, welded. And besides that, it's also just really dirty, so it could use a good cleanup. Alright, so first step, take everything out and clean it up. So time to get started. Container is now empty. I actually didn't do anything. But next up, uh, we're gonna wash it. Taking out there are some loose pieces of paint. So I'm gonna start taking those out. Rust isn't that big of a deal because the paint we're using can get painted over rust. So yes, mainly just take all the loose paint out so that the paint sticks to the to the container. Okay.
So we have a lot of these panels from the yellow one, I believe. The, and in the end, they didn't reuse them. So I, I'm gonna reuse them now and make the board for the General Helps workshop. They need uh, like a tool board for the all the tools, all the saws and scissors. I'm gonna try and make it out of this. If the if it can take the nails. Yeah, I think it's uh, strong enough. So I've been marking and drilling the holes to the board, but uh, one of the holes I drilled into the wrong place, so I need to make a plug there. So meanwhile Emily is working on the front part, I'm going to start here in the back to make the storage area and the first thing we're going to do is close up this wall so it separates the area and the mouse cannot come here anymore. And the tricky part is the bend in the container, so here the beam is touching and the beam is straight. There's a big gap here, so I need to try to make the wall fitting here so the mice cannot go through. So the container has an extra edge here, so if you put on the wooden beam, there's a gap here, so we need to cut out a bit here. Thank you. 
see all the shelves are now in. Uh, it's getting pretty dark, it must be a bit annoying for you guys as well. But luckily the electronic parts are live, so... Uh, We're gonna install the electricity. So we have some cable, socket and switch. Two big LED lights, electrical boxes, cable connectors, some pipes, and tools. So we're gonna install two lights, two switches, and a big socket here so we can charge all the batteries. And we're gonna hook it up to the solar system uh, to make sure we get power supply. The electricity comes out from the ground here. We need to hook up the electricity to our main system, which is set up here and should be relatively easy because we already have a fuse box in place. So we're just gonna add it there and then continue to connect in the container. So we have a pretty long light and both of the connectors are at the end. But unfortunately the ceiling is a bit bumpy. So if we put this one here, the connector, we cannot connect this one and the other way around because there's a big bump here. So we need to find out a logical place for this light. So now we just bought some off the shelf light switches, which is works, uh, but we like to have them from fresh plastic. Uh, and we already made sockets before, but we would really like to have light switches as well. We made a few before testing, but it didn't really work. And then we stopped, we got busy. So for anyone that is able to make a mold to inject with a fresh plastic machine, uh, you can get a thousand euro for the first one that shows us a working light switch. Um, so we need a table to the container for the general help and we made a fancy drawing so we start building it and Robert is gonna help me with the metal works cutting stuff and also welding so I can be doing other stuff sounds good should, should come up fine unless something goes wrong <laughs> Thank you. 
sister is finally helping us with painting. Do you like it? Yes. Fire. To be fair, with this room, like... This is the tabletop, it's quite nice actually, but uh, the surface is very rough, so... Okay, well, didn't see the Than Look at them, so happy. <laughs> <laughs> Looks good. Those were the Davis. God damn. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so I'm gonna start welding the holders for the press cutters and the chainsaws. I'm gonna use these off cuts from the actual table. So it's nice to use some off cuts since they are not going to the base. Things welded. It stays together. Uh, I need to get get some holes 
to mount it to the container so Vale. I think done? Yeah, nothing. Yeah, done. Cool. Nice, you're nearly done. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. No, but they look nice. Precious. Can I touch it? No. Okay. You finish Emily? Yeah, I am. Yeah. Now the, all the holders are painted so we can mount them to the wall. Cool. <laughs> Um, tools are here on the wall, pretty nice, actually how it turned out, yes. You speak it to yourself? Yes, mostly. <laughs> Um, so this is the current mess that the general help uses. It just breaks where is all of the stuff. Like these helmets and the saws, they are in the same. And the clothes, they are more or less in the same crates. And we also got some new tools, like these scissors. And rope. So now we want to go through all of this stuff and figure out what goes to the wall and what goes to the boxes. Nice glove. So this is what went to the crates. Press cutter and chainsaw stuff. Handles. Blade. Rope. Gloves. And their harnesses. Dave is working on the other side of the wall, so I'm only allowed to show the, this side of the uh, container.
be here listening. Huh? I'll be here listening. And not seeing. <laughs> the only thing left for me is to mount the voice. The device is on the table, the tools are on the wall. Everything is ready. And there is still more space to add a dirt helmet or another axe or more pliers or something. So, yeah, that's it for me. And last part. This is going to be a storage shelf for the kitchen. I'm going to use this coated plywood tonplex. The main reason for using this is that it's easy to clean because on this side is going to be for the kitchen and they might have experiments with fermentation or some leaking jars so in this way we can easily wipe it clean. Not a big fan of using this material but we didn't really find another option that has big large panels. So if you have suggestions for that for us in the future, let us know. And the design is pretty much based on a standard plywood size, which you find here, and then chopped in half. So that will be the width of this whole shelving system, which makes it easy to build, but also easy to take apart later on, because we didn't have to cut it that much. Time to get started building. Make some space. There's a big dent, maybe hard to see, but I see it. So the height of the shelf is based on some storage items we have. So we have these ones which we already use in the kitchen right now. But we also have them in a bigger version. Then we have jerry can size, standard size, which how we get our vinegar and things like that. A classic jar size. One shelf is going to be exactly two on top. So we can reuse them to store things and preserve them for the long term. All the wood is cut and drilled. Now it's time for assembly. This is the fun part. Emily is going to help here. Yes. Finish precision. So there should be space here in the back. So everything is now built, now I just need to clean it up and then uh, let the teams fill up in the storage areas.
All right, so the container's ready. Let me show you the inside. It's a bit tight in there, so we need a GoPro. So on this side, we have all the garden tools, uh, hanging and organized per category of tools. Uh, so it's easy at the end of the day to see what is missing, uh, so we can either find it back on the land uh, and make sure everything is in stock. In here we have our brush cutters. We have two electric ones and one gas powered one, so we can easily uh, take them out. Underneath the chainsaws, uh, electric one and gas powered as well. Then on this side we have all the smaller tools that we use. Um, so we have some hammers, uh, protective uh, helmets, saws, well you can see all the things. Uh, here we can charge the batteries for the chainsaw and the brush cutter. Uh, here we have a vise to uh, put in the chainsaw so we can sharpen it with some sharpening tools. We have some organic rope, so if you want to tie something quickly we got that uh, to put it on the land. And it then just rots away, so no plastic rope. Gloves, right and the left one separated so it's easier. And below we have all the oils, gasoline for the chainsaw and the brush cutters uh, to make sure they can run. So these are all the garden tools in here, the landscape area. And over here we have the storage area. So on this side, the workspace, uh, here we have things like cutting discs, drills in stock, and drill bits, the screws from our screw system, water filters, so whole year supply of them to make sure we have clean drinking water. And we also store linseed oil and paints we have here some electrical components. Yeah, it's not really fully equipped yet. We can now start ordering all the things. So until that time, it stays a bit empty and we can also use it to store some future projects that are coming up, like this one. But that's the workspace area. And then over here we have the kitchen where we store things like dog foods. So in these containers, for instance, uh, in this one, rice. If you're from Portugal, you know this guy, Tomoshas, good snack. We also use it to store our preserved food here. Over here we have crates, so they all fit the standardized crates. Some bottles to preserve the food. Things like brushes and cloths to clean. So these are all new ones, so when they wear out there or they break, we can stack ourselves up with this. Some potatoes. And here it also is a bit more <coughs> still kitchen things, but less food based. So biocarbonate, for instance, to clean or toilet paper, a big container of liquid soap to refill our hand soap. So we didn't have to buy these small packages all the time. Washing powder. And that's kind of the main point of having this container that we can buy things in bulk. Because buying things in bulk means uh, we can find a really good supplier uh, so really put a lot of effort into that, less transport and less packaging and also just less work, like less receipts, less administration, it's just simplifying life. And up until now it was kind of hard to do because we didn't have the storage place, but now we can really bulk up and uh, make sure we uh, make better choices in the things we buy. All right, so now the container is fully renovated. This was part of a three series video. The first one where we built the roof on top, the second one where we built the outside, and now the third one where we built the inside. And all the drawings, uh, you can find them online. So if you want to replicate it or parts of it, you can just download them. And next week, I'm going to show you probably the most risky thing we did so far in Project Cam. And it doesn't have to do anything with construction or renovation or tools. If you already want to see that video, make sure to support us on Patreon so you can see the video right now, one week ahead, uh, and also without advertisement, or not, and just subscribe and you see the video next week. Thanks for watching and see you in the next update.